Hello, and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the grisly and somewhat gruesome details of the top 10 British royal family exhumations. The list is compiled in the order of date the royal died, so let's jump straight in with the first on the list. Number 1. Edward the Confessor 1003 to 1066 Edward the Confessor was among the last Anglo-Saxon kings of England, ruling from 1042 to 1066. A series of strokes led to Edward's death. He died sometime on the night of the 4th or 5th of January 1066. He was buried on the 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany, Westminster Abbey. Henry I and his half-Saxon queen Matilda of Scotland had Edward's tomb opened in 1102. Osbert describes the opening of the tomb. When the top slab was taken away, a wonderful fragrance filled the church, suggesting that the body, if not embalmed, had at least been packed with aromatics. The body was wrapped in a precious pole, with a scepter by his side and a crown on his head. On his finger was a ring and sandals on his feet. The pole which covered his head was cut beneath the chin, and the long beard was seen. Bishop Gundolf, who was present at the time, was said to have plucked a hair from Edward's long white beard, for which he received a severe reprimand from the Abbot of Westminster. On the 13th of October 1163, St Edward's body was transferred to a shrine, specially prepared for it. At this time the famous ring was taken off his finger and deposited with the abbey relics. All the relics unfortunately disappeared at the dissolution of the monasteries in 1540. Edward's coffin was once again opened by Henry II in 1163. Edward's body was found wrapped in cloth of gold, with a gold embroidered mitre on his head and purple shoes at his feet, his long white beard still curling on his chest. His corpse was lifted out and the cloth of gold removed. The remains were re-wrapped in a silk cloth and put in a wooden coffin, then transferred to a new tomb in a ceremony presided over by the Archbishop of Canterbury. The pilgrim's ring Edward was found to be wearing was appropriated by Henry II as a relic, and the cloth of gold turned into three splendid copes. Edward was disturbed once more in 1685, when workmen were removing scaffolding used in the coronation ceremony for James II. A rafter fell, crashing into Edward's coffin. A richly ornamented and enamelled crucifix and gold chain were discovered under Edward's shoulder bones and were given to James II. When James hastily fled England in 1688, they were apparently stolen by fishermen. The confessor's wooden coffin still lies in a cavity in the top part of the Purbeck marble structure. The shrine is regarded as the centre of the abbey and five kings and four queens lie buried in his chapel. Number 2. King John, 1166 till 1216. King John, also known as John Lackland, was King of England from 1199 until his death in 1216. He lost the Duchy of Normandy in his wars with France, and a baronial revolt at the end of his reign led to the sealing of the Magna Carta. He was on campaign to quell rebellion within his kingdom in September 1216, when he contracted dysentery in East Anglia. By the time he reached Newark Castle, he was unable to travel any further and died on the night of the 18th of October 1216. His body was escorted south by a company of mercenaries and he was buried in Worcester Cathedral as per his own wishes. His tomb has been opened twice, once in 1529, when it was described that his head was covered with a monk's cowl, however it is now thought that this was his coronation cap. The tomb was opened again in 1797, at the prompting of the engraver Valentine Green. Green had written a history of the city of Worcester, and had come to doubt previous descriptions of the tomb and its contents among which was a long-standing contention that John had been buried elsewhere within the church. The effigy was removed first, 
followed by the slab on which it rested. Inside the tomb chest, a stone coffin was discovered, containing the royal remains. The Dean and the Chapter of Worcester Cathedral were immediately summoned, an inspection made of the King's body. Green describes how thousands thronged to see King John before the tomb was restored the next day and the coffin closed to sight. Medieval effigies usually show the subject in the prime of life. The effigy on John's tomb is unique. It is a lifelike image of him and is the oldest royal effigy in England, dating from 1232. John was found to be 5 foot 6 and a half inches tall. A robe of crimson damask was originally covering the body, but by 1797 most of the embroidery had deteriorated. The remains of a sword lay down the left side of his body and parts of the scabbard. The internal coffin was made of white highly stone from Worcestershire. The coffin rests on the pavement of the choir. Number 3. Edward I. 1239 to 1307. He was on his way to wage war in Scotland when he developed dysentery and died on the 7th of July 1307. His embalmed body was taken first to Walter Abbey in Essex before being brought to Westminster for burial in the chapel of St Edward the Confessor on the 27th of October. Edward's tomb was opened in 1774 with permission from the Dean of Westminster. His large grey marble tomb chest, in which his bones lie, has no effigy or decoration, and the now faint inscription was not painted on it until the 16th century. It translates as Edward I, Hammer of the Scots, Keep Troth. Inside a Purbeck marble coffin, his body was found nearly entire, wrapped in a waxed linen cloth and wearing royal robes of red and gold with a crimson mantle. A stole of thick white tissue lay across his chest, set with filigree gilt metal and semi-precious stones. Above these he wore a royal mantle of rich crimson satin. From the waist downwards he was covered with a rich cloth of figured gold. In his right hand was a sceptre, with a cross of copper gilt. In his left hand was a sceptre around five feet long, surmounted by a dove and oak leaves in enamels. On his head was a gilt metal crown. When they lifted the crown, his skull appeared bare, but his face and hands seemed intact. His head and face were covered with a cloth of crimson sarsenet. They measured the body at six feet two inches long. Number four, Richard II, 1367 to 1400. Richard II succeeded to the English throne at the age of 10 in 1377 and reigned until 1399. Richard died in captivity in Pontefract Castle in February 1400. He is thought to have been starved to death, though questions remain regarding his final fate. His body was taken south from Pontefract and displayed in the old St Paul's Cathedral before burial in Kings Langley Church in Hertfordshire. Henry V, in an effort to atone for his father's act of murder, moved Richard's body from King's Langley to its final resting place in Westminster Abbey, where the remains of his wife Anne were already entombed. The tomb was opened in 1871 during restoration work. The skulls of the King and Queen were visible, with no marks of violence seen on either. The tomb was opened in 1871 and most of Anne's skeleton was missing as bones had been extracted by visitors over the years through a hole in the side of the tomb base where enamelled shields had once been attached. Two copper gilt crowns, which were known from an earlier 19th century tomb opening to have been buried with the bodies, had disappeared, but a staff, scepter, part of the ball, two pairs of royal gloves and fragments of the peaked shoes still remained. The statues of saints in the niches below the effigies no longer remain. Dean Stanley arranged the bones neatly and also put back some of the other items which had been left in the tomb in 1413. A number of relics were obviously taken from the tomb in 1871 as they were recently found in a cigarette box in the basement of London's National Portrait Gallery.
contents of the box, dated the 31st of August 1871, included fragments of wood, possibly from the coffin itself, some fabric and a piece of leather from one of the royal gloves. Number 5. Catherine of Valois 1401-1437 Catherine of Valois, wife of Henry V, was the Queen Consort of England from 1420 until Henry's death in 1422. Their nine-month-old son inherited the crown as Henry VI. The young Queen Dowager embarked on a relationship which may have been marked by a secret marriage with Welsh courtier Owen Tudor. Their children went on to found the Tudor dynasty. The Tudor dynasty ruled the Kingdom of England from 1485 until 1603. Catherine died on the 3rd of January 1437, shortly after childbirth in London, and was buried in Westminster Abbey. In 1667, Catherine's corpse was exhibited to visitors who were willing to pay the Abbey staff. The famous diarist Samuel Pepys recorded the day he took his wife and daughters to Westminster Abbey and was permitted to embrace the corpse. He recalls, I now took them to Westminster Abbey, and there did show them all the tombs very finely, having one with us alone, there being other company this day to see the tombs, it being Shrove Tuesday, and here we did see by particular favour the body of Queen Catherine of Valois, and I had the upper part of her body in my hands, and I did kiss her mouth, reflecting upon it that I did kiss a queen, and that this was my birthday, thirty-six years old, that I did first kiss a queen. Her painted wooden funeral effigy still survives in the Abbey collection. Number 6, Edward IV, 1442-1483 Edward IV was a King of England from 1461 until October 1470 and again from April 1471 until his death in 1483. The first half of his reign was marred by the violence associated with the Wars of the Roses. He died on the 9th of April 1483, most likely from pneumonia caught on a fishing trip, and was buried in St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. His tomb was rediscovered in 1789 during restoration work on St George's Chapel. When the lead coffin was opened, some long brown hair was found near the skull, with shorter hair of the same colour on the neck of the skeleton. In the bottom of the coffin was a dark liquid, which immersed his feet to a depth of three inches. A physician at Windsor analysed the liquid and concluded that it came from the dissolution of the body. After the discovery of the tomb, many relics were removed, including locks of the king's hair and a phial containing some of the liquid. Number 7. Edward V. 1470 to around 1483. Edward V was King of England from his father Edward IV's death on the 9th of April 1483 until the 26th of June of the same year. He was never crowned and his 86 day reign was dominated by the influence of his uncle and Lord Protector Richard Duke of Gloucester who succeeded him as Richard III. Edward and his younger brother Richard Duke of York were the princes in the Tower who disappeared after being sent to the Tower of London. Responsibility for their deaths remains unknown, however historically has been widely attributed to Richard III. In 1674, workmen remodelling the Tower of London dug up a wooden box containing two small human skeletons. The bones were found buried ten feet under the staircase, leading to the Chapel of the White Tower. One anonymous report was that they were found with pieces of rag and velvet about them, which could indicate that the bodies were those of aristocrats. Four years after their discovery, the bones were placed in an urn and, on the orders of King Charles II, interred in Westminster Abbey. They were placed in a sarcophagus, designed by Sir Christopher Wren. The bones were removed and examined in 1933 by archivist of Westminster Abbey, Lawrence Tanner. By measuring certain bones and teeth, they concluded that the bones belonged to two children around the correct ages for the princes. The bones were found to have been interred carelessly, 
along with chicken and other animal bones, as well as three very rusty nails. One skeleton was larger than the other, but many of the bones were missing, including part of the smaller jawbone, and all of the teeth for the larger one, and many of the bones had also been broken by the original workmen. No further scientific examination has since been conducted on the bones, which remain in Westminster Abbey. In 2012, the remains of Richard III were discovered under a car park in Leicester, and their extensive DNA testing proved them to belong to him. However, the Church of England, backed by the Queen, has repeatedly refused to allow forensic tests on the children's bones, on the grounds that it could set a precedent for testing historical theories that would lead to multiple royal disinterments. Number 8. Anne Boleyn, 1501-1536 Anne Boleyn was Queen of England from 1533-1536, to as the second wife of King Henry VIII. Anne gave birth to the future Queen Elizabeth I. Henry was disappointed to have a daughter rather than a son. Anne went on to have three miscarriages, and by 1536 Henry was courting Jane Seymour. Henry had Anne and her brother George Boleyn investigated for adultery, incest and high treason. They were arrested, tried before a jury and found guilty. Even though the evidence against them was unconvincing, they were condemned to death. Henry commuted Anne's sentence from burning to beheading, and rather than have a queen beheaded with the common axe, he brought an expert swordsman from France to perform the execution. On the morning of Friday the 19th of May 1536, Anne Boleyn was executed within the Tower precincts, two days after her brother's beheading. She was buried in an unmarked grave in the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula in the parish church of the Tower of London. In 1876 it was discovered that the chapel's pavement had sunk in two places and had to be replaced. When the pavement was lifted, the bones of a female were found at a depth of about two feet, not lying in their original order, but heaped together into a smaller space. The bones were then examined by a surgeon, Dr Frederick Mout, who confirmed in a memorandum that they belonged to a female of between 25 and 30 years of age. He noted they were of a delicate frame of body, and who had been of a slender and perfect proportions. The forehead and lower jaw were small and especially well formed. The vertebrae were particularly small, especially one joint, the atlas, which was that next to the skull, and they bore witness to the Queen's little neck. He noted that the skeleton was about 5 feet to 5 feet 3 inches in height. A careful examination of the finger bones did not show any evidence of a sixth finger or any type of malformation. He went on to say that the remains were consistent with the descriptions of Anne and the sitter of the famous Holbein portrait of the Queen. Although the bones were mixed up, no other remains were found at that spot. The bones of George Boleyn were not found, but it was thought that the ground had been disturbed in the late 18th century and his remains removed then, or that he was buried in an area not touched by the restoration work. Number 9, Edward VI, 1537 to 1553. Edward VI the son of Henry VIII and Jane Seymour, was crowned king in 1547 at the age of nine. A common belief is that Edward VI was sickly throughout his childhood. However, despite a life-threatening fever at the age of four, recent historians believe that he enjoyed generally good health until the last six months of his life. In February 1553, at the age of 15, Edward fell ill with a fever and cough, probably tuberculosis, that gradually worsened. He died at Greenwich Palace on the 6th of July 1553. He was buried in the Henry VII Lady Chapel at Westminster Abbey. In 1871 there were concerns that some of the royal burial vaults underneath the abbey were deteriorating. With Queen Victoria's permission, several of the vaults were opened and examined. Edward's vault was discovered quite by accident, as there was only one lead-lined coffin in the chamber, it was deemed worthy of examination. The coffin was in poor condition, through age and moisture damage. The lead lining appeared to be the only adhesive holding the container together. 
Without disturbing the actual contents, it was noted that the skeletal remains were visible, as were the remnants of a skullcap. The coffin lid had an inscribed plate in Latin, which stated that the mortal remains within were those of Edward VI. Number 10, Charles I, 1600-1649 Charles I was the monarch of the three kingdoms of England, Scotland and Ireland from 1625 until his execution in 1649. Charles believed in the divine right of kings and his reign was marked by his quarrels with the Parliament of England which sought to curb his powers. This ultimately led to the English Civil War between Charles' royalist forces and parliamentarian forces led by Oliver Cromwell. Charles was defeated and imprisoned, then tried and convicted for high treason in January 1649. Charles' sentence of death by beheading was scheduled for the 30th of January 1649. On the morning of his execution, he wore two shirts to prevent the cold weather causing any noticeable shivers that the crowd could have mistaken for fear. He said a prayer then put his head on the block, signalling to his executioner that he was ready by stretching out his hands. He was then beheaded with one clean stroke of the axe. The severed head was held up by its long hair and exhibited to the crowd. After the execution, the king's head and his embalmed body were placed in a lead coffin and taken for burial in St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. His burial in Westminster Abbey having been refused by the new regime where he was laid to rest alongside the coffin of Henry VIII. The coffin was reopened in 1813 in the presence of the Prince Regent. It bore the inscription, King Charles, 1648. In England, up to 1752, Lady Day on the 25th of March was New Year's Day, so according to the English calendar, the King's execution occurred in 1648, not 1649. When a square opening was made in the lid, they discovered a decayed internal wooden coffin and the body carefully wrapped in cloth, which had been doused in a greasy resin. When the cloth was removed from the face, the skin was dark and discoloured, but muscles of the forehead and temples were intact. The beard, a red-brown, still came to a perfect point. The cartilage of the nose was gone, but the left eye was open and full, however it rapidly deteriorated on exposure. The shape of the face was a long oval. Many of the teeth remained, as did the left ear. The head was found to be loose, so it was picked up and viewed. The back part of the scalp had a remarkably fleshy appearance. The pores of the skin were distinct, and the tendons and ligaments of the neck were firm. The hair was thick at the back part of the head, and was found to be of a lustrous dark brown colour. The beard was a redder brown. The hair was cut short suggesting it was done either for the convenience of the executioner or locks were taken as mementos. The fourth cervical vertebrae had been sliced through perfectly smoothly by the executioner's axe. It was also noted at this time that there was a hole in Henry VIII's coffin, large enough for the skull to be visible, and some beard remained. If you have enjoyed this video, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video, if you have enjoyed it then please leave a like, comment and share on social media. Don't forget to subscribe for all the latest channel uploads. From me in Shropshire, goodbye.